Welcome to St. Andrew's Brighton. Today is Latari Day or Mothering Sunday. Latari means rejoice in Latin. Today is also the Feast of St. Joseph, so let us celebrate together. Let us sing our first processional hymn, Christ is our Cornerstone. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Please be seated. I have come and quietened my soul like a weaned child with its mother. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Let us pray. Mighty God, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins, Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins 
strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who from the line of your servant David raised up the carpenter Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the husband of Mary, his virgin mother, give us grace to follow Joseph's integrity of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over all my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that, I, that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod, such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever." Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed he would become the father of many nations according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.《马太福音》第一章，耶稣基督降生的事儿记在下面。他母亲玛利亚已经许配了约瑟，还没有迎娶。玛利亚就从圣灵怀了孕。他丈夫约瑟是个异人，不愿意明明的羞辱她，想要
Of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother Mary has been has been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace. Planned to dismiss her quietly, but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, "Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son. And he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today we remember Saint Joseph, that admirable man who named and raised the boy Jesus. As the Gospel reading says, he was a righteous or just man. At the same time, the Church venerates Joseph of Nazareth as a craftsman. As a man of work, probably a carpenter by trade, he was the one and only among all the men of work on earth, at whose workbench Jesus appeared every day. It was Joseph himself who had him learn the work of his profession, who started him on his way in it. Who taught him to overcome the difficulties and the resistance of the material element, and to draw out of shapelessness matter the work of human handicraft? It was Joseph who once for all linked the Son of God to human work. Thanks to him, the same Christ belongs also to the world of work. And gives witness to its dignity in the eyes of God. Along with the humanity of the Son of God, work too has been taken up into the mystery of the incarnation, and has also been redeemed in a special way. Pope Paul II said, "Saint Joseph is the model of those humble ones that Christianity raises up to great destinies." He is the proof that in order to be a good and genuine follower of Christ, there is no need of great things. It is enough to have the common, simple, and human virtues, 
but they need to be true and authentic. Joseph remains involved in the mystery of the church with his whole life and vocation, though much of his life is hidden and his vocation silent. Joseph does not speak in the Gospels. Instead, we are witnesses of the events that tell how deeply God himself incorporated Joseph's vocation in the mystery of the church. Today's liturgical readings particularly give testimony to this. The church was already born in some way from the promise that God made to Abraham, and, in the sa and at the same time, from the faith with which Abraham responded to God's call. We read the following sentences in the letter to the Romans. The promise to Abraham and his descendants that they should inherit the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. Further on, St Paul writes of the same Abraham, he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. It is fitting that we read these words of, in the liturgy of today's feast of St. Joseph. We hear them, we hear them thinking Joseph of Nazareth, who was a just man, to whom was accredited as justice, the fact that he believed in the God who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. These words, written about Abraham, we reread today thinking of Joseph, of the God of salvation, fulfilling the promise made to Abraham, sending his son into the world. It is precisely then that the faith of Joseph is manifested and is a measure of Abraham's faith. It is manifested in the word of God, Jesus, made flesh in Mary, Joseph's spouse, who at the announcement of the angel was found to be with child through the work of the Holy Spirit. And this occurred, as St Matthew writes, after Mary's engagement to Joseph but before they came to live together. So then St. Joseph's faith was to be manifested in the presence of the mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God. At that precise time, Joseph passed the great test of his faith, as Abraham had passed it centuries before. It is then that Joseph, the just man, believing in God as the one who calls all things into existence that do not exist. Joseph, who at first was unwilling to put Mary to shame and resolved to send her away quietly, now did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary with him and the one who had been begotten in her. Thus he showed that he was a true descendant of Abraham according to faith. Scripture says little of him, little more than we have read in this morning. It does not record even one spoken word by Joseph, the carpenter of Nazareth. And yet, even without words, he shows the depth of his faith. Joseph is a man of great spirit, your faith, not because he speaks his own words, but because he listens to the word of God. He listens in silence, and his heart ceaselessly perseveres in readily accepting the word of the living God. Therefore, Joseph has become truly a marvelous witness of the divine mystery. Today, great faith is necessary in each of us, in our families, in our communities, and in our church. Amen.
Let us stand and affirm the faith of the Church. The Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Please be seated. Holy God, you gave us our mothers, for which we give you joyful thanks. Today we especially thank you for all that our mothers gave us from the moment we were born into this amazing life. We remember the love and care they surround us with through our early years, the guidance they continue to give as we grew to maturity, the support that they continue to give as many of us become parents ourselves, and the role they played as grandparents, playing such a vital role in society. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we thank you for the role that so many mothers played in introducing us to you and to your son, Jesus Christ, through bedtime prayers and stories, in the way they served as an example of Christian life and introducing us to public worship in the fellowship of our mother churches and our first spiritual homes. Lord, in your mercy, Creator God, as we watch and read the news, we see the brokenness of our world and that for many families, life is more dangerous than ever before. We pray for healing among the nations, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, your son was born into a human family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all those that we, that we live amongst who are parents and all who care for children in our local communities. Strengthen all families who are living under stress and shine your love into homes where no human love is found. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for all mothers of children suffering from illness, recognising not only their anguish, but also the way that their love and determination really makes a big difference in the chances of recovery. We thank you for the many hours our parents spent caring for us when we were ill. And thank you too for the many children who grow up to be their parents' carers in later life. We pray for all those who are unwell, whether in body, mind or spirit. And we especially bring before you those of this parish or who are known to us who need the support of your Holy Spirit at this time. We pray for Fred, 
for Heather Ledbetter, Margaret Masters, Claire, Vanessa, Holly, Sophie, and also for Jan Warnicke, Cheryl Osborne, Bill Dove, Audrey Smythe, Wendy Harnity, Matthew, Robert Timms. Lord, in your mercy, merciful God, like a mother, you gather your children to you as gently as any human mother with her children. Turn the despair that comes through the parting of death into hope, and may we, through your gentleness, find comfort and restoration in our sadness and loss. We pray for Barbara Goody, who died recently. Rest eternal grant under Barbara, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Lord, in your mercy, everlasting God, you alone can see the future. And so we pray to you, who can see ahead of us, asking for your protection for each of us, for our families and those that we love. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayer. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Let us sing the thanksgiving hymn of today, The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this gift to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly just and right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, each year you bid your faithful people to cleanse their heart and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast by more faithful prayers and work of charity and by celebrating the mysteries of our rebirth. We are led to the fullness of grace as your son and daughters. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one and true sacrifice for sin and obtained the eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, with St. Joseph and St. Andrew, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, and we pray that by your word and your Holy Spirit, we who eat of them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and we had, when he has given you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, again giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, make once and for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 
We worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we're confident to pray each in our own language. Our Father, We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, give you in eternal life. The body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ give you in eternal life. The body of Christ give you in eternal life.
Heavenly Father, whose son grew in wisdom and stature in the home of Joseph, the carpenter of Nazareth, and on the wood of the cross perfected the work of the world's salvation. Help us, strengthened by the sacrament of his passion, to count the wisdom of the world as foolishness and to walk with him in simplicity and trust. Amen. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I have a few notices today. And the first one is there'll be a baptism next week for the Liu family, as well as three confirmations. So feel free to join us to celebrate this joyous event. And the second announcement I have is Holy Week and Easter services are coming up. So if you look at the back page, and I'll strongly suggest put this on your fridge or put it somewhere visible. We've got a lot of programs lined up for Holy Week and Easter. Starting from the 2nd of April, Palm Sunday, a procession of the palms at the Wayside Cross, to 4th of April, Holy Tuesday, and so on and so forth. With Good Friday, the 7th of April, a walk of witness and the veneration of the cross, and 7 p.m. Tenebrae. So have a, have a look at this and feel free to join us. We would love to have your presence in all our services. Let us sing our final hymn of the day. Now let us from this table rise. Please be seated. May the love of the Holy Family surround you. May the joy that was Mary's refresh you. May the faithfulness that was Joseph's encourage you. May the peace of the Christ child fill your lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>